Hello guys, uh, hello, welcome back, uh, welcome back on this streaming guys, welcome back on this new, in this new episode of Space Cafe guys, and girls obviously, uh, tonight guests with us, special from Brazil, Mental Projection. Hey, yo, dude. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey, everybody, what's going on? <laughs> How are you, brother? Uh, Welcome. First, doing good, man. Thanks. Uh, how about yourself? Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for, for the invite. Uh, it's such a cool project to have going on here, man. It's definitely uh, great to be a part of it, man. So, thanks thank a lot. you, bro. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you as a guest, bro. As a guest, Luis. Uh, this is your name. <laughs> you can, we can say to, uh, to all the people that follow us that you are Luis, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can. <laughs> So thank you so much to be here, bro. And so yeah, how are pleasure, you? Man. How's the life, bro? Uh, life's pretty hectic, dude. I've been working a lot lately, and um, honestly, I haven't had like much time like to focus on music lately. So, uh, but you know, uh, we never stop. Uh, we got to do other stuff. You know how it is. Uh, usually, people have to work on, uh, yeah. at the same time, and uh, it's just been pretty hectic. Uh, doing a lot of lots of stuff in my day. Wish my day had like. 30 hours <laughs> yeah, fuck, yeah. but it's cool man like it's a lot better when it's like this than when things are like monotonous and stuff so yeah i'm kind of pretty satisfied uh, it's, it, it, it's exhausting a bit like sometimes you, <laughs> i know it's i know kind of over overwhelming but yeah you, you, if you get through it it's definitely worth it uh, yes bro i can totally understand you bro also uh it's really it's really hard to work if you want to work good in a project like me on, or you or all the people that want to work and like professional doing professional stuff it's really hard also because you have to work as a normal with a normal job if we, if we can call it like that you know and it's really fucking hard so yeah good job bro and yeah um, <laughs> fucking you, amazing <laughs> So, uh, I told every time to the other guys that I have guests here that it's a really chill situation. It's like an interview, but okay. yeah, we can have a, ch a chat and a call and laughing a lot and shit. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can start to maybe to... Uh, so, if you want to speak about where, where you come from, uh, yo, Vanks, welcome in chat, bro. Welcome, Vanks. You can, you can see the chat right on the on the right yeah. yeah okay perfect yeah, yeah. Vanks, is, <laughs> Vanks is my best supporter the first the, the, my first follower one of the first that's fucking amazing oh, that's great yeah <laughs> crazy man crazy man yeah welcome to the stream bro yeah <laughs> nice yeah. to have you here again <laughs> so uh, you want to start maybe to speak with uh to us uh where you come from something about you maybe also how you approach to the music like also if you start to playing some instrument or you start directly okay. okay yeah yeah i actually do come from a music background uh i started playing guitar when i was like 10 years old or something and then i quickly like started learning the drums and uh but it didn't i i didn't keep up with that um i actually stopped and started to focus on different th things and then it was not only until I believe it was 2009 or something. It's where I went to my first, like, it was the first time I, someone, I had a friend who was a bit older than I was. I was like 13, 14 at, at the time. And he showed me uh, infected mushroom and asterisks. And I was like, what? Yeah. It's like, what? What the fuck is this, dude? <laughs> what is this fucking music? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, like, I was uh, in a totally different situation. And then, like, I went to... Uh, a few electronic music parties, like uh, in my city, we used to have a lot of electro house parties and dubstep parties uh, at that time. And uh, it was actually my first contact with, with uh, electronic music, but you know. Uh, and then like 2010, I think I touched CDJs for the first time and uh, I learned how to mix like tech house and stuff. And then I went a little bit over proc trends, uh, like progressive stuff. And then I actually stopped going to parties, stopped listening to side trends like okay. for like six years. So I uh, basically I can count like the start of my journey in side trends. I can count it as like uh, late 2015 or something. So yeah, I've been uh, this is uh, this is a, like the way 
I can uh, I can stop <laughs> I can stop one second, bro, if it's possible, because uh, we start to work on your camera that have some fucking shit with glitch. But maybe okay. I think that you have to switch the microphone, bro, because I think that you are working with a camera microphone, bro. No, it is actually my microphone, dude. Yeah. Is it? Really? Yeah, it says here. I mean, let me switch back and forth. Really? Okay, yeah, it says on your box. Oh, sorry. Right. It was different from, from the beginning. Sorry, bro. Okay. Yeah. Can I turn the volume a bit, uh, a bit down? So okay, no, maybe... perfect. Perfect. Sorry, my fault. Sorry. <laughs> but is it good? Uh, is, it good is it good quality? No, yeah, no, no. It's good. It's good. good, but maybe because you was a little bit uh in the back ah, okay i'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, just... gonna, i'm gonna get a little closer <laughs> take it easy. no sorry sorry my fault my fault my fault. uh so That's you good, so you start directly uh to producing uh electronic music like certains yeah yeah uh when i when i started producing like when i uh moved back like when i got interested in, in electronic music again uh like five or six years later it was already like listening to progressive stuff progressive trends and then slowly I had contact with, with, with my like more different stuff, but then uh, in the beginning it was only like progressive trends. Like my first set was actually uh, progressive trends, uh, and then uh, not too long later uh, after that I actually downloaded Ableton Live, and then I said, well, then I had listened to some of like I think Blacklight Records tracks, and I was like, it was like 146 BPM. I was like, wow, that's so fast. <laughs> You was so fast, one one four six. Like what? <laughs> like that blew my mind, dude. That blew my mind completely. And that Black like, Light is an amazing record. So I love it. You know. Yeah, it was. I think it was. It was one of the first labels that I listened to, like side trains, like faster, like full on stuff, nighttime full on stuff, because I was used to like Ace Ventura and then Master X, a lot of that kind of uh, things, and then. The first contact with like some nighttime oriented tracks was like really impressive, dude. So I think the first time I opened Ableton, I, I, I already knew I wanted to do something on that. On that uh, anyway, <laughs> you said about you said about infected mushroom, and I think it's one of one of the first. Uh, you know, when I was really younger, you know, and also because my first side trans party, or maybe my first Goa trans party, because it was in Italy in Bologna and was a goa minimal party and the first time i hear the music with big speakers and a lot of people they say what the fuck what kind of music is it you know and i tried to understand yeah. which kind of music music was you know because also there wasn't uh youtube spotify and all that thing exactly that there's yeah, now you know totally... i look so I, uh, I, there I, was I... a lot less information that we have today so uh, it was a lot more difficult to understand what that was and now, so, sorry, uh... how, how old are you bro um 26 dude i'm gonna be 27 in three okay. months oh, okay okay so you're not so old like me fucking piece of fucking shit of music how about yourself man <laughs> how about yourself how old are you man you're not so old come on man <laughs> oh, I'm, thir i'm 33 like jesus fucking christ bro you know? <laughs> so but yeah you know I, I, sometimes when i speak about that with the younger people <laughs> you know you have to explain that there's uh that that when I was younger, like 16, there wasn't this shit like YouTube and stuff. So when I started pr to producing in my 20, uh, there wasn't nothing. So fuck, there was only some. Even form. when I did, man. Even yeah, when I did. Less, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, even when I did, there wasn't so much stuff. Like you had to learn with the little bits that you could find online. And for me, it's even uh, for you as well, uh, in Italy as well, because you're not English uh, speakers. No, yeah. Uh, but for Brazilians, it was a lot difficult because uh, people who did not speak English at that time didn't have access to the little things that there was because they were all in English. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, also. it was a lot harder to access, and it was like only—it's not even like ten years ago. It was like six years ago. So uh, now it's weird how much information you no, can get yeah, online, bro. or how much stuff you can. Like you can—you can learn basically anything. I always joke about how you can learn to build a fucking building on YouTube. Yeah, you like can... there's not a single thing out there you cannot learn on YouTube, man. So <laughs> there's a fucking tutorial for all this shit. You know, you want to do music, you want to fucking roll a joint, yeah. you want to fucking all the things. That's how I learned to do everything, dude. Literally everything I do in my life, uh, I learn on YouTube. Really. <laughs> no, me too. All me too. You know, because the first time I download uh, Ableton Live. If I show you how I start with me and one, me and one of my best friends, we started to use Ableton Live, you know, 
we was like fucking you know how it's called um, how to say it in english like prehistoric things you know it was <laughs> yeah. like prehistoric mans like what the fuck yeah yeah and using yeah. using the clip like fucking idiots so and trying trying to make fire with sticks for the first time <laughs> yeah, yeah that's it uh, you know trying to making some music but this in a fucking shit way you know and after two yeah. years we starting to understand how it works and things and also you know there there wasn't really a lot of courses or stuff you had to meet some people that using that shit and um, maybe learn from some people mm -hmm. but in real life not on the or not on youtube not on fucking maybe on myspace do you remember fucking myspace bro yeah yeah i do man i do yeah we had to go like through forums and stuff to, to look up to these things man and and like it's so weird now because everything is just related to instagram facebook and where well, you can get everything man i know I, i i say this because i recently started uh studying about front-end development and dude it's crazy how much stuff you can find on youtube there are like full courses like 12 hour 20 hour courses uh, and like one video and you can learn it from top to bottom like everything you need I remember, <laughs> just so easy man. i remember that like uh six or seven years ago yeah six years ago there was a only one guy that put on youtube a video on uh, how to make a side trans track from scratch you know and wasn't like okay. it was like uh 10 videos like uh one hour 50 minutes uh, each to each one but only one kind of fucking video now there's a lot of shit so so good so good <coughs> good yeah man i remember I'm, i remember the struggles i had to go through to learn how to make my first fm lead man wow that was so <laughs> i watched so many i looked up uh the, the whole youtube videos man uh and i just couldn't learn it i just couldn't find it and it was just trying to tweak tweak like silent one and trying to make like crazy you know, fms with it so you know also me i had no idea i started to do some uh content and tutorials and stuff but sometimes i stop myself and thinking on what i can show to the people i know that i can show how i make my fm leads or how i make my sounds you know but there's a, a tons of shit on youtube and everywhere so sometimes i i have to think on how what i can show to the people this is the reason why i look every time alien chaos and i love him because he's fucking a genius every time yeah. he, he he's the best man he's wow. the best <laughs> yeah. he's the best definitely man he's the yeah. best but the tutorials like he's so creative in his tutorials and the things that he shows and the way that he edits these videos make them so dynamic and so different and like it's not it's never boring to watch his videos it's never like I, You don't watch it just because you want to learn the fucking sound. You watch it because it's fun to watch. And, and <laughs> also, yeah. You see what I mean? Like, and he teaches stuff that you don't see in other channels. Like, I think the the, the hardest part of finding what what to show and what to teach is that you can basically find one tutorial for anything you need out there. And just trying to make different stuff, like things you can't find. These these are the real uh, like the. You know, this is the, the the real deal with like producing, and this is why Alan Chaos does it so well, dude. Oh yeah, sure. It's an amazing. He's an amazing guy and an amazing producer and an amazing teacher too, because it's not really easy also to teach. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Uh, I always say this this to my uh, fellow producers. Sitting with uh, Alien Chaos at the studio, uh, it's 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 mind blowing, dude. <laughs> Seriously, I'm always impressed to see him. Like his processes of making music make it seem so fucking easy, and then when you try to replicate the, the things he does, it never sounds like you're so nearly good. like as good. But you are closer to Alien Chaos, or yours? So yeah, man. Good. Yeah, man. We go way back, man. He's a really great friend of mine. I, I love him. Are you are in uh, the same city? No, no, not the same city. We live in the same states, like 300k. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. But you know, I went to, I, I stayed at his place like multiple times already, and. It's always super fun. <laughs> uh, I yeah, man. I uh, him and I go way back, actually. Like, I think I met him like four or five years ago, and yeah, we we uh, we just got a really strong connection ever since that uh, beginning, man. When we first started making tracks, and we actually made a track. Uh, I was just I, I I I don't even think I had my life set completely completely yet, and 
I think I had just a couple of tracks done, and then we made a track. I made Alien Chaos at 148 BPM. I don't know if I have heard this track, but it's pretty. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. And yeah, man. Ever since then, like we have been、uh, really close friends, and yeah, it's just、so、just、nice. one of the best people I met on Side Trans, man. For,、uh, yeah. Hands down. I hope to meet. I, I hope to meet him some sometimes in,、uh, in the future. Would be fucking amazing. You know, I live with. I I live really closer to、uh, Sonic System and Yatsi. This、mm-hmm. is so amazing. They are so good friends, and they are so amazing producers. So also, you are so fucking、uh, lucky to have Eden Kios really really closer. Yeah.、Uh, yeah so, exactly. So、uh, so I want to ask you、um, if you can choose one of. Really big producers in Cyber and Scene to have a collab, which which is your your dream to collab with? Dude,、uh, this is th- this question comes pretty easy. The answer comes pretty easy to me.、Uh, it's definitely definitely your fellow Italian Delirium Tremens, man. Ah、uh, shit, bro. Ah、uh, shit.、Uh, yeah. th- this is my this is where I want to reach, man. This is really、uh, the day I can collab with them. It's gonna be like. How <laughs> about you can try to break? You can try to write to him. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, he actually mastered one of my tracks.、Uh, my、oh. last release with Axie Flux. He was he was the one who mastered it. And, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, that's my dream collab, and I've been saying that for years, man. Ever since the first track I listened、uh, from him,、uh, it's my biggest goal of collabing with. <laughs> I say I say sometimes these things. You know, I don't listen too much to a, a lot of music、uh, because I don't have too much time and I have tons of shit to do. So、uh, there was in the last streaming one of、uh, one of ga- of a guy in、uh, in the chat that said to me, "Oh, let's listen、uh, this track from Delirium Tremens. It's called Airpass something. I don't remember. Fuck, epic track, bro. E- epic. And also, I love Delirium Tremens because it's fucking amazing producers and it's really groovy and darky, really." Yeah, man.、Fun. Like the the whole music stretcher that he writes is it's just so it's mind blowing, man. Like. And not to mention the quality of it, but just、uh, speaking of this, like the storytelling and the structure of the tracks is something really. It's like, it's like so cinematic. It's like you're watching a movie. It's like it's <laughs> yes, bro. Fuck,、like, man, it's crazy shit, man. Also, <laughs> groovy. I love the the kind of sound that he do, like、uh, because they're not really higher about fre- not about frequencies, you know, but are really in the mid range, you know, but are really yeah, fucking groovy. And- What the fuck? But crazy. Yeah. Really, yeah. Really, really <laughs>、um, you have a, oh, you have your mental projection、uh, project, but you have also some side project, or you have, you are planning or something, beside your、uh, project. I actually did, man.、Uh, I used to make abstraction.、Uh, it was a live set that I had with、uh, Thiago from the project Chronica. And、uh, we had the project for like three or four years, but then、uh, we kind of split ways、uh, with the project, and we just each decided that we wanted to focus on our、uh, solo project. And、uh, it was really cool; like, it was more dark stuff.、Uh, one, we had like tracks from like 150, really foresty, weird stuff, and then up to 160, 165 BPM. Because, like, yeah, was... be- because your project is like how much,、uh, how much, how much is the range of BPMs? Uh, mental projection.、Uh, lately, I've been playing only like 148 to 150, even 152 sometimes, <laughs> in special not occasions. Too, not, <laughs> too much, not too much. <laughs> But then,、uh, yeah, it's basically like I do have some tracks.、Uh, the tracks I have、uh, below 148 are pretty old, actually.、Uh, I can't remember my last release that was like 146 or something, like so long ago. Okay. But <laughs> ever since I, I I found out like 148, I said, yeah, this is this is what I this is where I'm at, you know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of producers about、uh, in this range, <laughs> fucking love this 148. I don't know why, but. but、uh, A lot of people say to me because you can get groovy. It's not so fast that you can get so groovy, but it's also not slow. So it's like, yeah, it's really catchy, and like you can、yeah. play around with so many different rhythms and basses and stuff. And I don't know, man. I think you can do it pretty much any kind of music, but I don't know, man. Yeah, That's、sure. just something I find on 148. Like for me,、uh, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> just works for me for the way that I think about it. And, yeah. How much How much time do you spend on、uh, in studio, more or less? Wow, man.、Uh, as I said earlier,、uh, lately it's been pretty difficult. So it's like I can say it's much more than like two or three hours a week because, like, yeah, my day's been pretty busy. 
from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So uh, during the week. So my weekends is a time where I have to, you know, uh, that I can get to the studio and then maybe like three or four hour session. Yeah. On the weekends. Yeah. So not too much lately, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I think it's good. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can, you kind of you kind of should get more productive. Like you, you force yourself to be more productive doing with, with little time because you know you don't have like eight eight hours a day to be at the studio. So you try to do more in less time. So yeah, it even even uh, kind of makes you change the way you think about the track structuring and makes it a lot easier. At least for me. <laughs> oh no, no, yeah, absolutely. I sp I, sp I do the same. I spend a lot. Of, I think mm, till. Five months ago, uh, I was used to working like a normal job in a garden. So I spent. Uh, fuck! Wait a second. I lost my the word. I do <laughs> eight hours, eight hours working and coming back to the studio and doing three, four hours, but and going to yeah. going on bed, and going to sleep like two a.m. every fucking day was really fun. yeah and sometimes yeah man not to mention sometimes it's easy it, it's really difficult to like work for eight to ten hours and then get home and then listen to loud music and stuff sometimes you just want to chill just want to eat something and, yeah. you know just just rest or even oh, like absolutely yeah i can totally understand you bro absolutely and uh, you uh, when uh, which is your dough where do you produce uh, able to live since the beginning. I actually played around with Bitwig, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Really enjoy Bitwig, man. It's really fun. And I also have like, a, I think like three or four collabs that I've done in Logic. Mm -hmm. uh, I got two tracks with Alien Code, uh, and I don't know some other collabs that I did in Logic. But uh, my main one is it's definitely Able to Live. Okay, me too. Um... What do you think about using samples, samples, loops, stuff? Mm. Do you use it? You doesn't use it? Sometimes, man. Depends on what I'm looking for and if it fits a track. Great, man. If you don't use it, just throw a bunch of ones. And, and if it, if you use it well, uh, there is absolutely no problem with it, dude. Uh, I don't know. Just use it wisely. Like if you if you're not trying to make whole tracks out of samples and just trying to like make a whole mess of different packs and different mixes and just throw throw them in there and, and create your track, then there's like, then I see a bit of a problem, but I don't know, uh, who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, the most important thing is if you use it well, you just go ahead. Uh, I do it all the time. Uh, I use it like presets as well, uh, just not just the way it is. I try to fit in in the right moment on my track and yeah, man, you, you can use it whatever oh, no, you want. No, just, yeah. would... just not using it as a crutch, man. Just using it as support your, your track. If you want like really specific stuff to fill in uh, some of the spaces, uh, it's the best thing to do, man. I do I do a track. Uh, I do a track with um, Dr. Down. It was called it. No, not Cybernara. Mom Spaghetti. That was I do the entire track with all his samples because he released a sample back with thousand samples and loops and i do a streaming about that you know i open the project and using just the the samples you know taking drag and drop and after that i say to him bro i do that i can i mean, can maybe send it to you and let's do a collab about, about that and he do the second part of the track and it was a fucking amazing track mom spaghetti crazy <laughs> crazy shit yeah alien chaos has some crazy ones as well man i love his samples just Hello, released one by Zenheiser. Yeah, man, love his stuff. I always use it. Thanks for the follow, Lucas. Welcome on streaming, bro. Um, I, 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 you say that you used uh, Alien Chaos pack, right? Sample yeah. pack. Oh, nice. Fucking amazing. You you never do some sample packs or preset pack. Uh, dude, I kind of tried multiple times, like forcing myself to save stuff and, and record, and uh, but I never do, man. Uh, that's that's actually a problem. I think I uh, my my music production would be a lot easier if I had some stuff saved, some presets and stuff. But I rarely save them. I rarely remember to because I I usually use one channel and then I keep bouncing, like yeah. then I keep recording and creating new channels and then changing the sound and. and recording 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 and then i just never stop on one thing and i keep moving i never 
<laughs> never, never remember to. So I'm sure that you're not the person that using temp template about your, uh, your, your own. Sometimes your you. Own sometimes yeah. Your own template I, I talk about. Ah, okay. I do have like one MIDI template just to set the drums and the kick and the bass, just so I don't have to go and draw the MIDI and then draw the little notes, just because it's always. Uh, basically the same pattern like create a midi for uh like an open hi-hat it was always hit the same place so i just switched the, the samples on the midi channel uh my so my template's basically this and uh it's a midi template just so i can set up samples like drum samples and stuff and then i i try try uh i start arranging the the the, the whole track structure uh you re you you read what lucas wrote in the chat can you can you can you read what he wrote? Because it, it, <laughs> I think it's Portuguese, and I don't know how, I don't know how to say that. Habugentos. <laughs> yeah, man. He uh, he always said to me when I used to make like lower notes, um, uh, lower notes tracks. He used to say to me that my always my tracks always sound like kind of grumpy and you have like a mad face and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was that was my back then. And you have you have a, a key that you use uh, more than other. Uh, def, Which uh, one is? I try not to get stuck with it, but uh, like honestly, it's been quite a long time since I did anything below E or something. I usually go like F and G and, and D sharp and stuff. Okay. That's usually the way I work, but I sometimes I do one track in A like. I, I really never not not never but you know um, I don't use a lot like E D I don't using a lot because it's really lower you know I, if I have to do something yeah. a little bit darker I use that so I started I start a, uh, a collab track with Eliza from Pro Patronus Records and mm -hmm. it's something really she's uh, she's more darker than me and more forestry than me absolutely so. Okay, I say okay. Let's start with. You D. try to get there, yeah. <laughs> let's try. Let's start with D. D uh, that is yeah. Because I used to use like uh, A or G. A is one of my favorite one. It's really. It's, it's really high energy. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. high energy. Dance yeah. floor blaster every time. <laughs> One fifty BPM. A. It's the craziest thing, man. It's yeah. crazy shit. Man. Every time. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I love really. It's on a fucking amazing vibe, in my opinion, is like 160. Not a lot of people using 160. Well, 160 is okay. really is really cool because it's really fast, not so fast, but also it's, a, it's still groovy. So yeah, yeah, you can get yeah too much faster than that. You kind of lose the groove because it gets like you can hear like the, the yep. baseline notes just get so yeah, not 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 really my style. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. Um, what is your inspiration to doing tracks or maybe how and where do you take your inspiration from tracks? Dude, uh, I usually get it, get it from the, from kind of strange places, actually, <laughs> like TV shows, uh, other stuff, rap music. Um, it's just usually where I get my inspiration because I usually don't listen too much side trance at home. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm really not like, I, I don't use side trance for inspiration for, for my tracks. So, because I don't know, man, I think that it, it, it's what differs my sound a bit from, from the other styles uh, because I try to, to grab like different inspirations from multiple places and not just rely on side trance, like a field side trance art artist that I really like. And then I try to, uh, I get inspired by them, and, and eventually I'm gonna start yeah. sounding a bit like them. Um, yeah, these are, these are the things that uh, make that scaring me about, you know, maybe listening to someone and maybe doing stuff really similar to other people. So I try to do every time something different and and try to take inspiration from different kind of music, also drum and bass now or hardcore. Drum and bass. I've been listening to a lot of liquid drum and bass, jungle like '90s drum and bass. Oh man. And it's you amazing do, stuff. And you do you do some remix too? You like to doing remixes or stuff? Not only from side trance music, like remixes from I don't know music from eighteen or. I kind of do, man. But the way that I use like 
uh, the way that I get inspired is not like using like trying to remix the track and making it sound like the original one, but instead I take like uh, the, the last track I was uh, working on, I took a track that I really liked by Daz FX, if I'm not mistaken, wow. with DJ Premier, like it's an old school uh, hip hop track. And then I got the acapella and then I started just using that vocals to start to vibe the track. So that's where I, uh, it was not, I can't say it's a remix, but you know, I, I'm getting inspiration from a different thing. And you know, this is the kind of remix I usually do with the tracks that, that inspire me. Okay. So <laughs> there's a question that you say that someone asking to you on the stories and now i'm really curious about that shit. so the 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 question is what is the craziest things that happening during one of your set <laughs> let's let, let, I'm really well curious. definitely uh, uh definitely a lot of stories come to mind but there's this one specifically which was really funny because i i never saw that ever again uh it was not a big party uh -huh. uh, but i was playing a dj set yet and it was like seven eight years ago and then I saw that uh, people started fighting. Like there were two guys just throwing punches at each other and stuff. And I was playing and you never know how to act when something like this happens. And then I just kept on playing. And well, there was a river that went by the <laughs> dance floor. Dude, and then people started gathering around the fight. Uh, I don't know if they was just trying to watch it, trying to split it. I don't know, man. But then uh, both of the guys fell in the river and like a bunch of people jumped in just to try to split them up because they kept on fighting in the water, man. I was like, I was like the stage. I was playing and I'm like, and I said, dude, should I like stop? Like, what, what's the situation here? Then, then eventually they stopped fighting and they got out of the water and everything was okay i believe okay, <laughs> no one really got, got hurt but it was like man watching that from the dance floor from the, the stage i uh, was just <laughs> it was unbelievable yeah. you're playing the music and watching the guys fucking fighting yeah like, and you said no fighting. no so, sorry sorry yeah go ahead <laughs> <laughs> no because i wanted to, to uh now you remind me uh one funny thing that happened in south africa when i was in south africa i wasn't there you know i was to the party uh there was a festival and Jump Street was come to play there in Johannesburg, outside okay. from the city, you know. And there, now you say there about the river and I think about that. So there was a kind of river. I, I show you how it was. There was the stage. Here there was the stage. And after here, um, going down, there was another um, land and there was a, a, a fucking river, you know, starting in the in the weekend like in friday starting to uh, raining a lot you know in johannesburg fucking raining a lot when it started raining there's a lot of rain so the river become really big and you know and in fucking saturday or sunday don't remember the people jump street taking a story about that there was a fucking car into the river <laughs> what <laughs> But the funny things was that was a <laughs> the camping was a, was there, you know. And I say, what the uh, fuck if the river comes out? And so did it go off? through the camp? Like what the fuck? Yeah, did it bro. go over like some barracks or stuff? And then someone what? and jumps it, taking uh, stories and brought uh, on the stories like uh, when the people like when the people t uh, get so high in the, the festival and going to the fucking. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh, so I wanted like rainy and stuff must have been like muddy as fuck and then I saw something like that happening at a party room which was really muddy but then it was just sliding cars and hitting into each other in the parking lot it was ugly <laughs> and something yeah just like that I see I, I saw sometimes also some some videos in Brazil about people that coming to the festival and there's fucking really big muddy now on the fucking dance floor and also to come to the party so really crazy and yeah. what was the same for me i was i was the drop festival in slovenia in 2020 it's raining like two days it was hectic bro it was fucking like that but the, the camper was arriving and there was a camper stuck it in the middle of the road because it was impossible <laughs> to go outside so really crazy thank you and uh wait a second and uh, uh, yeah to to finish this uh episode uh, this episode this um how to say this fact 
This guy, I knew this guy at the festival, and the car was fucking new. He bought a fucking new car, and the car was in the fucking oh river. Oh my god. Fuck, <laughs> Like could he get out? Could like, he get a like, car out? Like twenty. They can. What? The twenty fuck, yeah. twenty thousand fucking euros. So like, he wasn't able to get the car out of the river then. No, I think two days after they take off the from the. Oh man. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> oh, that's... That sucks, man. That definitely sucks. No, <laughs> brother. What the fuck? What did I say? What I think about is was. What the fuck? The organizer of the party, why they not think about that, bro? You know, really, the people can have the fucking river at the camping, you know? Imagine, <laughs> imagine you going to sleep, open the tent, and see the river. <laughs> Go directly the into the water. <laughs> crazy, bro. Yeah, crazy, man. Mm. Bad planning. I want to ask you, uh, uh, how bigger was the... No. How to say it. the biggest festival or or party where where you had to play? How many people there was there, and how much was big? Um, the biggest one, more crowded, was definitely there were both like really really crowded parties, which was uh, Origins, that it's uh, a couple of states down from where I live, uh, which was like three thousand, I believe. Nice. Uh, and then, for, uh, of course, Adana uh, at New Year's this uh, this New Year's. Uh, which was just huge, man. You know, Adana, it's uh, always that huge tent, that huge stage was amazing. I don't know how many people were there, but I believe like 6,000, like seven, I don't know. So five, good. maybe. I don't and, know. You, yeah. and, and you played just in, uh, just in Brazil or so somewhere in the... Yeah, so far just in Brazil, man. I've been through many states of Brazil, but so far... Um, yeah, and closer to Brazil. What uh, there's other country that I have a big scene like Brazil? Uh, not as big as Brazil, obviously, because Brazil is just so huge. As we were speaking about, like before we started the live stream, like Brazil is just so huge. Uh, you can get you can get pretty big just playing in Brazil uh, because it's there is just so many different people, different organizations, different parties, just so big. Uh, I've been to Paraguay actually once. Yeah. Uh, few years back but then that's uh that's really <laughs> and okay okay because i i know that there's a big scene in brazil absolutely like i think it's a fucking big like in india more or less or maybe yeah it yeah. is is the mother mother of science is in india but i think it's also in brazil there's a really fucking big scene absolutely um but yeah. i don't know about other states like i don't know argentina maybe or if there's good i know argentina has some amazing producers man uh argentinian producers are always really good man frantic, all the ones i all the ones i listen frantic noises from argentina right or i believe yeah i think so yeah adana was epic adana is a festival yeah yeah it's yeah. a big festival and you played there right yeah it was the last new year's it was crazy, man. After two years of like pandemic and lockdown and stuff, and not seeing people, not seeing festivals, not going up on stages, and then all of a sudden I was playing like two six thousand people. Yeah, after two years, man. It was two years. Absolutely, yeah. I can I can feel the same. In Italy, we started to have new fe to have festival and stuff after two years, and there was the Atlas Festival to play, and it was expected like two thousand people, and there arrived four thousand five hundred people. Ah. Crazy, dude. Uh, crazy. It was really crazy. Three, three stage, uh, chill, techno, and psytrance. Was okay. crazy, bro. Crazy. Fucking amazing. Yeah, that was three, three stages as well. Man. There was exactly that main stage, the techno one, and the chill out dome. It was amazing, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, the people want to fucking dance after this shit, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Um. The um, analog or digital? Oh, I don't know, man. I don't think I can so choose are... one. So uh, sorry. they're both Thank unique you. in their ways. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, no. I want to ask you if you have also uh, in the question. I want to ask you. You have some analog stuffs in your studio? Uh, no, no, no. I actually don't. The only times I've played with analog stuff was at Alien KL Studio. Uh, only times I've, I've tweaked like analog stuff. So. With what? I don't know, man. Uh, you can make each one, each one of them have their own capabilities, and, and you know, so 
I, I really can't choose one or say which one is best. Uh, definitely, definitely the quality of an analog is a lot different and it has a different texture and different and the warmth and stuff. Definitely, that's for sure. But oh uh, yeah, those you know, it's you, fucking expensive also. Exactly. Yeah, it you comes with a cost, man. You know, <laughs> this is the fucking things, you know. I don't know if in Brazil it's the same, but in Italy every time they want the people, the organizer want to pay nothing, like fucking nothing. But you have to, if you want to buy something, it's fucking expensive. You have to spend yeah. two fucking thousand euros and at least, man. Yeah, yeah. In Brazil, it's even more difficult because because you even got to import it. Uh, like the exchange rate of our money, like currencies, is already crazy. But then you have to import from Europe, and yeah. Yeah, the, you People see, got it. Must, there's a the yeah. El, you see that alien cause is coming. Is coming. He's on the chat. Is it? Yeah, is welcome, it? brother. We are, we was talking about. Yeah, you, bro. what's up, chaos? Yes, yes. About, welcome, I, welcome, bro. <laughs> uh, bro, I, I I blast your track in my in the last in the last track of my set was your track Samba Tech, bro, and it was a fucking blast, bro. I destroyed the fucking dance floor, crazy, bro. Before yeah, Yatsi <laughs> and Yatsi, Yatsi is, is come on the dance floor. Look at me and say, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Are you crazy? You're destroying the fucking dead. <laughs> crazy. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. And so yeah, I, I think the same anyway about analog and um, and digital. I think that at the moment there's a lot of fucking things that in digital like vital, also serum and other stuff that you can really do. Yeah. yeah. Fucking amazing sound and. It, it, you can do great things with both, man. So yeah, if if you can combine both of them, then it's the best, definitely. <laughs> yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, wait a second. What is your next gig, bro? The next gig is in a couple of months, I believe. Uh, it's actually in September, if I'm not mistaken. It's winter now there. Right? In uh, here in Brazil, yeah, it's winter. Yeah, it's Up cold. Until like August or July, it's really cold. Where I live, it's like, it's really, really cold, man. We actually had snow in Brazil. Oh, Where yeah. I lived uh, uh, like 10 years ago. Uh, it's crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> the winter here is pretty. There's some questions that you want to ask <laughs> Alien Chaos. If you want to ask something, we are here to. Fucking amazing. You're a legend, bro. Fucking uh, yeah, what is yeah, your... we were just. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Yeah, we were just talking about him uh, in, in his studio and stuff, and now he shows it. Really nice to see him here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I hope to have a fucking session with Alien Chaos sometimes. Uh, sometimes when it will be possible, or maybe if I I will come to Brazil, maybe closer to him, maybe fucking a dream. I say to him in the last time, <laughs> in the last streaming, uh, is one of the first um, artists that I uh, listen in the beginning of my music listening about Psytrance and high tech and stuff. And it's crazy. It's really fucking amazing. My uh, finish. This guy just blew my mind. Finished first track I listened from. <laughs> Yeah, it was just when we became friends, man. <laughs> yes, yes. You was you was um uh, you had some lesson with him also? Uh actually yeah, after we met with that track, I went to his place to, to do a little a few classes, like sound design classes, and this is the way we made the track I said earlier. Uh yeah, it was after I think the track he's referring to was like my third track ever and he listened to it and he mastered it and I played it in my first gig as a live. In such a mighty festival in Brazil, like it was five days of rain. It was really <laughs> different. It was man, it was the muddiest festival ever, dude. <laughs> like the mud puddles on the dance floor, like it would go up to your knee, dude. For real. Yeah, and the people and the fucking side friends people love that shit. I don't know why, but yeah, fucking dancing, I'm like jumping on in the yeah. mud, and like yeah. Yes, oh, bro. <laughs> it's raining a lot. Fuck. <laughs> and what is your best bit? Your your best VST that you love, that you cannot live without that? Oh man, that's, uh, this, at this point it's a bit cliche, I think, but definitely Serum. Uh, I just can't live with, without it. Uh, yeah. I just can't live without it. Dude, I tried Vital. I'm using a lot, a lot more Vital lately, actually. Just trying to do something different, but my tracks like up until 
three months ago, uh, it was like a hundred percent serum, like from base to like all the effects and stuff, all in the serum, and it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> I really can't live with, without it, dude. Okay. Um, how, um, how will you see yourself in the next five or ten years about your career? <laughs> Five to ten years, man. Um, I don't know. It's difficult to say, man. Actually, I just see myself still making music somehow and just having a nice studio, being able to travel and see my friends and you know, and going to new places. This is where I see it going, and this is the, this is why I'm working on it. It's it's just to get there uh, someday. Okay. As being comfortable with it, like not not 100 depending on music to to like to pay for my stuff, but uh, you know, just having it as a way of doing it for fun and, and yeah, still working hard. It's not what I mean, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I get it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And what was your first label? Uh, what is the first label where you have released your first track, or maybe you start working with? The first track that released one of my tracks, that's actually <laughs> the first thing that I did on Ableton that slightly sounded like Psytrance, like was pretty shitty. It was literally the first thing that I did on, on Ableton. There was a friend of mine who uh, picked up the project and said, hey, it's good. And he was like, he was uh, producing for a while. So he fixed the things that I did and we released that track. It was by Eclipse Records, but it was like, My first release on Beatport, it's literally the first thing I ever did on Ableton 2. Of course, it was a collab, so he did a lot of stuff that he was more experienced, but uh, yeah, it was my first one. And then shortly after, I think I released my first EP for Synoptics. Uh, it was in Versus EP with Spiritual Mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and then actually my first solo EP was released by Mosaico Records in 2018, I believe. And how many how many tracks you released? Uh, it's funny, dude. I was just looking at my beatport today, but I think like, uh, like 30, I want to say. Yeah, probably. No, 20? Probably. I don't know. Man. How much? Really how, can't say. Maybe, <laughs> um, you said I'm not asked to you that, but um, your project is like when when you start your project. Uh, the first time I played live was in. 2017 yeah 2017 okay and so yeah that's what i started that's what i started producing and it was, was your first project or you had some, some no no it's my first project it was right when i uh started producing and i just when i found the name i i stuck with it and the first thing i ever did uh, with producing because i had i had um i started with another project that was really shit Not really should be it was really slower and different you know like 146 145 you know i started to produce it like aja and this kind of music but you know was really the beginning and was really shit. i released like two i think two uh two eps but really shit. I, when i listen <laughs> to that I listen yeah to that man i know <laughs> I know exactly how it feels, man. Yeah. If I go through my B port, there's a lot of stuff there that I just listen to. Like, oh man, I shouldn't have done it. I should have waited just a bit more. <laughs> But while it's there, man, I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> um, there's some suggestion that you want to say to the people that starting to producing music, or maybe something, some skill that you want to say. Um, I think the most important one it's like understanding like the music structure and like the uh, arrangement for me is the most important part. I think you can learn like mixing and the more advanced stuff along the way. But if you uh, don't get really stuck in the more technical things at, in the beginning, uh, just go like learning about music, like seeing how the projects are your references, like do their arrangements, study like the arrangement and the music story and. I uh, start there and then maybe you can go to because uh, I, I, I did the mistake of like in the beginning I tried to learn like too many technical mixing secrets and yeah. stuff that I never 
I don't even use today. I was learning it before I even had one complete track. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you learn the basics and like the whole arrangement thing for me is the most important thing you can uh, focus on at the beginning and always actually. <laughs> yeah, also because you, you, you uh, or maybe this is one of the problem that I had in the beginning, you know, starting to do some stuff and arriving to the, in the middle of the track and after that saying, okay, now, okay. what the fuck? What they have to do yeah exactly yeah time. yeah exactly yeah know. because sometimes you, you you try to learn too much about like going like doing crazy sounds and learning about sound synthesis at the beginning and you just get stuck in a loop where you create a bunch of crazy sounds and then you, you, you had no idea what to do with them and this is you know this is why it's so important because you learn about like sound synthesis knowing what you're looking for and what the, what kind of sound you want to create so yeah, for me, up until today, the most important part is always like the um, the arrangement and storytelling and stuff. Yeah, the, to don't get to don't get uh, old, <laughs> to don't getting old with <laughs> listening the same eight bars loop. And... <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but... Like posting it on Instagram, like new tracks coming, and you have like sixty four kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy shit, dude. But it lasts for like 15 seconds, and it goes back to the beginning. <laughs> and what, what? What is? What is your the the part or the sound that is really hectic for you to producing? Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe you hate doing kicks or I don't know atmosphere. There's some of these sound that you really you that really you don't like to do. That you fucking say every time you say fuck, I don't like it to do that. Man, the thing uh, I think is like controlling the peaks when you're like final mixing the track, like you're doing the final mix and you have like just uh, a few parts of the track where you have like a like 2 dB peak and you're like, like a plus two, your track is hitting like at, at minus four and then you have like that one peak at 2, two dB and like, yes. you, what the fucking thing is coming from and you, then you try multiple things and you turn channels off and it never works, man. It's this is a problem I actually got a bit frustrated to be honest. Yeah, I think the same. Or maybe no, no, yeah, now not because I, I see a video from Dash Glitch about peaks and controlling peaks and doing stuff with uh, standard clip, the clipper. Standard clip, mm -hmm. it's fucking amazing. Now we're using everywhere, like fucking salt, you know? <laughs> I'm okay. using all the sound because you can really chop the peaks and doing really good stuff and it's fucking amazing um, yeah, cool. but to be honest I don't like too much doing pods ah okay man yeah I used to struggle with that a lot man mm. and I found out that if you, you can do a lot of stuff with, with a simple delay and stuff you can do a lot of pads <laughs> <laughs> um, because like a few years ago all my tracks were just like really short and metallic sounds yeah like people said you it sounded a lot more a lot like high tech but it was like 148 bpm because it was you had no pads no ambiences nothing it was only like small snipples of sound and, and like really mono and glitchy and robot-y <laughs> and now you use it uh, nah now i tried to work with like the same sound over and over and try to make like multiple sounds with the same thing like if i can come up with something really cool in serial i really try to use it through, throughout the whole track mm. like in multiple ways and that's this is where i have the more uh the, the, the most fun part to me uh is actually that when i get something really good uh, on serum and then i can use it throughout the whole structure of the track it's for me it's the best man mm -hmm. okay uh what you're working on now while you're working on uh, what is your plan for the next i don't know about releases and stuff uh, i actually do have a few releases scheduled for this year um one is being released by sonata records which is a collab with broken it's called am i weird uh, it's being released at the 9th if i'm not mistaken it's next friday uh it's a really cool release i was uh, happy enough to be able to make the cover uh the 3d animation and stuff for this release so it's definitely really special to me uh the track is actually uh one of my favorites as well uh, and then i do have a couple of singles going out uh and one or two compilations so yeah there's a lot going on in 2022 yet <laughs> that i can say okay 
I'm looking for my question if I have something <laughs> more to ask. Uh, we're not talking about that, or I, I forget if we have already talked about that. What, what, uh, what is your, who is your favorite artist at the moment in the scene? Or maybe that you like? Uh, favorite artist, just musically or... No, no, I think my favorite in, in multiple ways. I think my favorite artist, the way he works and the, the, the way he manages his career is Oxyflux, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also Alien Chaos is just a really big reference to me. And it's such, so cool to have him as a reference because he's like close to me. So uh, it's really, uh, for me, it's good to be able to be, to mirror to someone who I actually know personally and stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, so... Yeah, these two guys for me are, are the biggest inspirations in the scene. Okay. <clears throat> And... Wait a second. I'm thinking about what I can ask you because I'm done with, <laughs> my, with my question, to be honest. If you want to speak about something, we can speak about something. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, man, it was really fun. It was really chill. Uh, not so interviewy as uh, usually these things can go. I think we chatted. It was really fun <laughs> so far. It's an amazing chat, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh... I was thinking about. Uh... And we were lucky enough that the camera stopped glitching just when we started. Yeah, absolutely. That's, the, that's the, really the strangest crazy. thing, man. Uh, before we started live streaming, it was fucked up, man. And you never, you never, th reason. you never think about to do, to create a proper instrument, you know. Sometimes I spoke with one of my friends sometimes ago, and they say, "What the fuck? I want to do." Uh... Okay, now I was reading for Alien Kills what he wrote. I was, I was talking about one of my friends, and I say. I want to do something, you know, like an instrument, like Jump Street that he do Rhythmizer, you know, something similar. But they never, uh, you know, I don't know where to start. Yeah. You know, like that, what I can create some new things. This never... one's actually pretty crazy, man. When I see stuff like that, I see, man, these people are so advanced, man, at, at what they do. It's so impressive. And it's just so cool to see how much skill someone has of their tools man that's basically the same tools that i work with every day but the way he uses it and the way he can like automate stuff it's these things take like alien kids as well uh, we keep talking about it but he's building his own vst as well so yeah that goes beyond music producing that goes really beyond what i know or have any idea how to do so that's always impressive yeah i think that alien chaos could be one of that can create <laughs> these kind of things you know i i you know i i don't know i yeah. i don't know where to start what the fuck if i think about what i can do you know maybe maybe one day we will have a illumination or something similar that can say, okay <laughs> okay i need that and i want to do that maybe exactly yeah That just just blows my mind, man. That blows my mind. It's like combining effect you like and make a way to make you your plugin. Yeah, absolutely. For example, if you always you reverbs delay and chorus, you can make a plugin with this process. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. It could be interesting, absolutely. Or maybe yeah. Yeah, because you know sounds about right yeah it makes sense <laughs> because also me i think about i i using a lot beat repeat at the moment you know but so so hard every time i open something you know doing something on serum or, or vital the first things that i do is put a fucking beat repeat after that you know so but there's already something like um like uh how is called uh glitch 2 Or there's Looperator also, you know, that can do this kind of thing. The classics, yeah, the classics. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe I can thinking about that, you know, but also Beat Repeat is really crazy and I love it, but mm, yeah. Thank you. I love it as well. <laughs> Thank you, Alien Chaos, for the suggestion. It could be interesting. Has a way to understand maybe what to do to have a new kind of instrument, absolutely. Really interesting. I never think about that. <laughs> But you know, I, because yeah, 
Sometimes you need something that maybe already someone. <laughs> That maybe someone yeah, exactly. Someone went it, through you know? the hassles of learning, like the back wiring of everything you're seeing in the front. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And mm. Mm. <laughs> I was think I'm thinking. Uh. What the fuck is that? Not sure, man. It was loud as fuck. It's so, it's so, it's so good, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think everything's fine. Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Is is something a part uh, of production? Absolutely. Yeah, because it actually has literally nothing to do with what we are used to, like while we're writing a track, like going to through like what goes on, like below the surface of a VST is a whole different story. Mm. If you start doing so much, you forget to produce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> don't, don't tell me about that. Don't speak about that because I think I I thought the same in the last one or two weeks. I'm start organizing party with my friends of mine in Milan, like after parties and stuff. And I leave a little bit the production. I was back like two days ago, coming back to the studio, sit down in the studio, say, what the fuck? And I was stuck at doing music. So okay yeah I forget. <laughs> not, not for, i'm not forget how, how to produce it but i was like okay now i have to do that you know i take like two hours to coming back like in a normal process so yeah it's like it's like muscle memory it takes the time for it to get used to it back again yeah it's like it's like <laughs> when you play guitar you know and stop maybe playing guitar for you are maybe a beginner when i i, I start also me uh in the beginning playing guitars you know and the first time in the beginning if i leave uh two days after two days coming back with the guitars it was fucking hectic you know like you're coming back to from zero it's fucking you have to work this is the reason why i say to uh, no what not i say to you but you spoke about that maybe not every day you can work i think that maybe it's better working also half an hour or one hour in the studio every day that yeah the studio definitely. for four days because fuck you yeah, it's it, exactly the feeling i have every weekend man it takes a while for you to get back to it like it's not mm. too easy just sitting down and you can get like stuff going i uh, usually takes like a, a, the first hour is basically just like getting used to it again so, yeah that's definitely a lot better doing little by little every day <laughs> And I want to ask you about it, about speakers about in Brazil. Which kind of speaker do you, do you use? The, the organizer using usually. There's not uh, the organizers some... are, uh, at like festivals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Also, there you have also uh, the... you have sorry you have also some parties in the clubs or something similar. Uh, in clubs, not too many. There are, but I'm uh, that haven't been to uh, any of the big ones. Uh, indoor stuff but uh usually like the biggest one for the big big party is like um, what the fuck, man? <laughs> something going on out there <laughs> shooting in the room. Yeah, exactly i'm gonna get down my desk man <laughs> scary shit <laughs> i really forgot what i was talking about man uh, about the festivals and uh clubs if yeah you're... usually yeah exactly uh for the big big festivals usually what they use is power base system it's mm -hmm. a huge huge system and there's like a few other ones but this one is the one that i think i played on it both on adana and also Mududiaz, i played at uh, power base also at origins which was like the three biggest festivals i ever played uh, I used this very sound system. <laughs> but Adana Festival, sorry, it was the was the festival that you that you do the video. The yeah, with yeah, a, with a big exactly. crowd. Oh, okay, yes, I remember that video. Yeah, Fuck yeah. yeah, it was amazing. Huh? That was a big one. <laughs> yeah, fucking big crowd. Yeah, look, it looks like a like Boom Festival, or something similar. Yeah, that tent. Yeah, that tent really yeah. reminds Boom Festival. And you never been also in Europe maybe for a festival or stuff? Never? No, actually no, man. <laughs> yeah. Not even like just traveling. Uh, never been here. I never been in, in at the Boom Festival too, or maybe in a big festival like Ozora. I was at I was at Drop Festival. 
and that was not so big it's like a master of puppets but a little bit smaller you know there was okay. a there was a big sound system but lambda labs uh fucking amazing but not so big festival you know i think it's the third edition maybe or the second one but yeah it okay. was so good i've never been in a really big festival like boom festival or stuff but they want to uh, it's cool man it's, it, it's definitely a very very different experience uh going through going to such a big festival than going to like small regional ones yeah uh it's definitely like you can you you really can't say which one's best but uh it, it's really different experience uh well, yeah it's different because that maybe not uh, not a lot of people not maybe not a lot you know three thousand people is different than twenty thousand you know i was at secret festival yeah, yeah, yeah. i was at yeah, secret yeah. festival in hungary it was like it's a pop festival you know there's different artists there was gorillas i listened skrillex dead mouse uh, a lot of good artists but pop you know there was like uh five hundred thousand people in one week what yeah bro it's fucking massive it's really massive what the fuck man but you know it's really strange and different you know you you can there's a different connection than four thousand people that you can start to meet the same people at the dance floor it's really different uh different kind of vibes you know yeah it's a different experience man total different experience yeah, but they never play it. Like if they lose your friend, like you can't, you you can't let go of your friends, man. Because if you lose them, you you literally lo lo lost them, man. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that they see I saw Prodigy for two times in two, 2014 and 2016. I see Prodigy in these two years, and I remember the first uh, I was at in the main stage in the uh, in front with my friends. And when start, I don't remember which was the track, the first track, maybe Voodoo People, I don't remember. But when start the first drop, I lost my friends in one second. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> Look at the run and say, okay, let's see you after the, the concert. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Banks. Have an amazing night, brother. Have a good one, man. Thanks for, thanks to be here, my bro. Yes. Sir. Thanks for joining in. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I think that we are done or maybe if you want to speak about you have you want to speak about something or about your channels your promotion stuff you have something to say to the people um for now uh just a quick shout out to my next release which is coming next week i my weird uh july 9th is gonna be really cool by sonar records so everyone stay tuned this year is gonna be a lot of the releases so just make sure to keep track on my instagram and soundcloud and every social media you can think of <laughs> absolutely there's a lot going on in 2022 like i think i got at least like five or six tracks being released yet this year so yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> yes yes bro. this is a fucking amazing brother um yeah i'm not more question brother if you want to speak about something we can speak but uh, I'm curious about the, I think which kind of music do you listen in that is not Psytrance what, um, what is your favorite kind of music or art yeah uh, my favorite one has got to be like like golden era underground like hip-hop 90s hip-hop like Das effects Lords of the underground uh, Wu-Tang Clan these are definitely definitely my favorite style uh, and then I go through hardcore stuff like punk rock stuff sometimes go through like some 70s brazilian music which is also amazing so that really depends on the the mood i am or <laughs> at what time i am so yeah i listen to a lot of stuff different stuff what which is the but my favorite one which my is, favorite one is definitely yeah hip hop yeah which is the which is the the main music the main genre that go that is listening in brazil <clears throat> Uh, actually, the main one, there are two, which are like definitely Street on Asia, which is like country music, Brazilian country music. And um, the other one should be like funk, like Brazilian funk. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think these two are the biggest, biggest ones right now, but hip hop's pretty big as well. Uh, but some are uh, some, how can I say? I don't want to say commercial style hip hop, but yeah, but definitely like pop, like 
pop and rap and yeah, that kind of stuff. There's a, also trap. There's a, there's some good trap artists. Yeah, there are some big artists, man. But I do, uh, I mean, like big, uh, like mainstream, yeah. But uh, we, we have some crazy big hip hop artists as well, which I'm also a huge fan of. Yeah, it's the same in Italy. Also, there's a big trap scene. Uh, about or maybe I think it's one of the most mu kind of music listening, you know, is it's like a mainstreaming kind of music at the moment, you know. What, what okay. In the past was like uh, more pop music or more Italian kind of music, like uh, or maybe also in the 17, 18, you know. Uh, okay. But, but now is one of the main the mainstreaming kind of music is trap, you know, the one of the biggest artists that sell more music is trap music these are crazy wow. they're so good also because someone collaborate with uh, american uh artists and trappers so it's so good but it's it's evolved really strange because about it's about trap you know i don't know okay and uh, you know in the 19 there was a lot of hip-hop and rap music also in Italy, but was really underground and in the in the last I think seven, seven, eight years it exploded. This, no, no, five years, six years it exploded. This fucking trap, and I like it. You know? Wow, man! I would never guess that trap would be mainstream in Italy, man. <laughs> I would never guess that for sure. I wish I would send to you something to listen. To. <laughs> okay, for sure. Because it's strange, also, yeah. because the beat are fucking hard and really. Yeah, we do and... actually do have some rap artists who went mainstream, but you know, it's it's they're going to a very different like mainstream rap style like pop it well, like more pop and stuff uh but they do come from a rapping background so and, and it's still technically rap or trap so yeah okay, we actually okay. do have a few of those but they're not like the biggest like the big 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 ones the big ones are definitely like the, the country music uh artists I'm, I'm curious about that i want to listen something about that you know about this country brazilian music because i, I yeah, never honestly and, yeah. no yeah, it's honestly. a style i definitely i definitely can stand it man <laughs> maybe, it's difficult it's painful yeah maybe you can try to remix some shit from that bro. <laughs> oh man no way <laughs> oh my god i'll find a way man i'll find a way okay. <laughs> um so that's it bro i think that we're done was on a fucking amazing chat bro yeah, it was so amazing, man. It was so like fluent and stuff and so chill. So yeah, yeah I just want to thank everyone who showed up, man. It was just great. It was a great chat. It was a great podcast. So thanks a lot for an invite one more time, dude. Thanks to you, bro, to be here. And I will I will upload on YouTube to uh, this podcast. Absolutely. So if, if someone lost the podcast, they can come and see. can go. You can still catch up, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Or maybe I'll do yeah. also some clips from here and doing some promotion would be fucking amazing Definitely, and sure. so that's it thanks a lot Luis to be with us in this fifth episode bro and big pleasure man big pleasure so have an amazing mm -hmm. night brother cheers to the chat to alien chaos banks and all the people that was there and thank you so much brother so let's chat later see you in the next one